Hey guys, so in this tutorial we're going to be creating a very, very basic little main menu uh, and learn about some event handling so we can actually have uh, some kind of screen before we go into our game. So now we can actually exit the game or click new game and then get dropped into the game. Um, and then as, of course as you can see we'll have this floating exit button here and you can click that and it can quit. Something that's very useful for you guys to learn. Uh, obviously we need a UI that does something. Uh, and we're also going to real quick uh, correct something in the previous video. Turns out I was wrong about something last video. What a big surprise, right? Uh, for some reason I forgot that event.text.text is actually UTF-8. Uh, and CGUI takes UTF-32 for the string. So this whole conversion thing that we wrote actually doesn't work. Now if we were converting UTF-32 to UTF-32 it should work. Uh, but that's not what we were doing. So hopefully you still learned from this, but just know that it is wrong. Now I'm not going to walk through every step for uh, doing the proper conversion, but I'm going to give you all the tools you need. You guys are pretty smart. You've made it this far. You should be able to figure it out. Uh, basically, you just need to get some kind of converter that will convert UTF-8 to UTF-32. I want to thank Spartan190 for figuring all this stuff out. You can actually just use uh, this utfcpp.sourceforge.net. I'll put this in the description of the video. You can go there and get a UTF converting library that can convert from all different UTF uh, uh, encodings uh, back and forth. And then here's some, even some code that he provided, uh, Spartan190 provided. Uh, that will actually do this for you in this code. So if you really need um, proper UTF handling, then make sure you do this or something similar. Uh, if you're like me and you're just being kind of lazy and you don't really care about UTF right now because you're just you're not really planning on making this use any Unicode, then you can just leave this and not touch it, even though it's wrong, because it'll still you know work fine for regular ASCII characters. All right, now let's actually go into the event handling, which is actually uh, pretty darn easy. Uh, so let's go ahead and go to, uh, where do we want to go? We want to go to our gameplay screen. So right now, this is where we are creating our UI, and I really don't like how messy this function is getting. I know it's just sort of a little practice function, but we should at least split it up a little bit. So let's go ahead and also give ourselves an init UI function so we can separate all our UI stuff. Uh, so let's just put it, uh, we'll put it under on entry, we'll say void init, uh, and why would we put it in public, we're going to make it private, we're going to say void init UI, and I'll, I'll put it right there, like that, and then we're going to put that in the CPP file, and go ahead and implement that, and right now we're just going to basically copy paste all of the UI stuff that we've done, uh, and put it in that function, so let's see, we have all of this should be it, so we're just going to call init UI, Maybe we should have called it init GUI, who cares, and put it right there. Okay, so this is going to init the user interface. Uh, now we can go ahead and practice adding an event. So here we have this test button. Let's make this test button do something more interesting. Let's say uh, test button will exit. Exit game. Now let's go ahead and run that again so I can remind you guys what our game even looks like and that we do have that button there. And that changing this text should indeed change the text on the screen. You got to make sure that we're not doing something dumb. Uh, here we go, and there it is. Uh, do not send. Okay, so we have this exit game button that we can click, and it doesn't do anything. Let's make it so that this exit game button actually does exit the game. So I'm going to close this. Uh, so to do that, what we need to do is we need to use uh, the uh, CEGUI's event handling stuff. And it's actually very, very simple. All we have to do is create ourselves a function that it's going to get called whenever we click the button. So let's start by making that function. And whenever you're making an event handling function, I like to, let's say void, I like to uh, give it the prefix on. So for instance, we would have on exit clicked. And that's the event handler that's going to run when we clicked the, the exit fun function. So we're going to take that and copy it into the CPP file, and there we go. Now this is our function that's going to get called in the gameplay screen whenever we click the exit button. And all it's going to do is, let's see, I believe we have a game state variable in the iGame screen. Let's go see, because we have a, oh, here we go, m current state, that's what we want. So all we're going to do is we're going to set that state, we're going to say m current state equals uh, let's say exit application. So that should exit. And let's also print something out in case that's not working correctly. In fact, let's just start by only printing something out. I'm quitting and we comment this out for now. Because actually, what is that complaining about? It's saying 
semicolon missing. Okay, there's no real error there. Screen state is not a class name because it's a Bengen screen state. It's been a little while since I've dabbled in this code. If you guys watched my previous video, you see why. But that's okay. Now we are moving forward. We have on exit click to comment that out. Now let's actually try uh, hooking this up, which is incredibly, incredibly easy. So we want to hook it up to this test button right here. So we're going to use the button's subscribe event. So let's go ahead and do it right here. Set the event to be called when we click. So we're going to say test button, arrow, since it's a pointer, subscribe event. And the first thing we need to put is the type of event. So CEGUI colon colon. And this is a push button. So we're going to go to push button. CEGUI colon colon push button colon colon. And if we type event, I don't know if you can see if the recorder is picking it up. But we have all of these different events we can look at. There's uh, event child removed, event deactivated, event disabled, enabled. These are all things that are going to happen when a specific action occurs. So events, for instance, if we have uh, event input capture gained, Whenever the input is captured by that uh, the button, for instance, when you click on it, then that's going to fire. Or let's say we have event hidden. Whenever you hide the button, if you set its hidden field to true, that event's going to fire, for instance. All we care about right now is event clicked. So we're going to use the event clicked because we want it to happen when we click on it. And we'll put a comma. And now we need to do the subscriber portion. So the subscriber is the function and class that is going to be subscribing to this event. It's going to be what's actually running when it gets clicked. And that's where this on exit clicked function comes in. So all we're going to do is pass it a function pointer to this on clicked, and we're also going to give it our object, which is just the this pointer. I'm sure you're familiar with the this pointer. And that'll allow it to get called whenever we click. Uh, so all we got to do is say CEGUI colon colon uh, event colon colon subscriber. And this is all in the CEGUI documentation if you ever forget it. And first we need to get the function pointer for our function. So we're going to say the address of gameplay screen colon colon on exit clicked there we go and then we need to give it the object which is going to be just this so what this is saying is we want to use the on exit clicked function and we want to use our current gameplay screen object as the object that's going to call that function now we do have an error here, uh, and that's because I actually neglected to actually set up the type of the function uh, correctly. Of course, I forgot to do that. Uh, the type of function that you can use for an event is very specific. It has to be a bool function, and it also has to have an additional parameter for the arguments. Uh, whenever we call a function, there's actually arguments that get passed in. For instance, on the click button, uh, there is uh, probably some information about where it was clicked and things like that that get passed in uh, through the events field. So what we want to do is whenever we uh, actually create this function, we need to also give it a parameter that has the event arguments. So we're going to say const CEGUI, CEGUI, and then it's event args ampersand E. Now if we don't use these arguments, it's no problem at all. Uh, in fact, we're probably not going to use them at all in this function right here. Uh, but we do need to have this parameter here. If we don't have this parameter there, it's not going to work right because it's going to uh, be looking uh, to pass in something to it. So there we go. It's event args and this is a bool. There we go. That's what it wants. And so here we'll just return true. All right, so this is the format that it wants. Now the error went away. So now we should be able to run it. And whenever we click on that button, we should get an I'm quitting. So let's go ahead and try. All right, and there we go, and shut up, and let's put uh, this over here, hopefully you can see that. Now when I click exit, we're getting an I'm quitting there, and there we go, it's working perfectly. So now what we can do is we can get rid of the cout statement, and we can just set the current state to exit application, and now when we run it and we quit that button, it should exit the game. So when I click, there we go, the game exits. Works perfectly. So what we can do now is we can actually use this to have somewhat of a main menu. So that's what I want to go ahead and do right now. Let's go ahead and do that since we have plenty of time. This has been a pretty quick video. Uh, we're going to want to create a new class. So right now we only have gameplay screen uh, .h and gameplay screen .cpp. Let's also make a main menu screen and a main uh, yeah, header and C++ file. So let's go to add class. And we're going to say add and we'll call it main menu screen. There we go. And that will get created. 
And we can save a bit of time by doing a bit of copy-paste uh, for all of these things that we're going to need to override. Or if you have Visual Assist, you can use that to fill it in. We'll also do init UI and check input as well. We'll have all that. And let's even copy on exit clicked because we're going to need that as well. So we're going to take that, put it in main menu screen dot h, and this should be main menu screen, not gameplay screen. There we go. Get rid of that. Put the semicolon down there. And we need to copy our includes too, so let's grab all of these. Uh, we probably don't need all these, but you know, it's okay. I'm gonna be a little lazy. Let's see, we don't need box. Um, and we don't need box 2D, I don't think. Uh, probably. Uh, don't need. Eh, I'll just leave it, it's fine. You guys can come through and optimize that if you need to. Alright, we've got all these things that we got to implement. So I'm going to use Visual Assist, uh, what was it, refactor, create method implementations in the CPP file, obviously. So that's where they're going to go. Okay, we have all of our functions now. And I actually duplicated these. Let's, why is that duplicated? I'm going to get rid of that. Do we need that? I don't even think we need it. Cool. So uh, right now, uh, we're basically just going to set it up the same way as we have this. We want to have our window passed through to our uh, base function or sorry, no, we're not. We're just setting the uh, setting the member variable window. There we go. In window is window, and we need to actually have that window. So let's copy that. Uh, where is it? In window. Anything else we need here? We're gonna need the camera, and we're gonna need a GUI, and uh, so let's just copy all this and then trim out what we don't need. There we go, and we'll put this at the bottom because that's where I like to put it don't need uh, these and sprite batch could come in handy but I actually we're just gonna have buttons for now so we'll not even worry about sprite batch and we're not even gonna worry about texture or debug rendering we'll just have these three things right now and the windows getting passed in uh, let's see what else do we need so the next screen index in this case it's not going to be screen index no screen but previous one is going to be screen index no screen so let's go here in main menu screen there's no previous screen to the main menu however we do need to have a new screen value for the uh, the next for the actual um, sorry the gameplay screen so until now we've only had a single screen uh, so we haven't actually had to deal with screen indices um, but remember if if uh, we go to let's say app.cpp here each screen has its own screen index and by default we're just returning I believe negative one uh, because we haven't set up the actual screen index we need to give each screen an individual unique index uh, so our main menu screen will probably be zero and our gameplay screen will probably be one and uh, let's also make sure that we're going to define those indices in some header file somewhere that everybody can include and not have any issues with circular uh, includes so we're just going to add a he header file here we're going to say new item and we're going to make it screen indices there we go so here's where we're going to put all of our screen indices for our uh, pragma ones for our different screens so the we'll say the main menu screen and let's make sure it matches the um, the kind of naming convention we have for them here there we go we have this here's the no screen and this is already negative one we don't have to redefine this one and uh, I'm going to say const int uh, is that what it wants? It wants an int, I believe. Yes, it wants an int. So screen index uh, gameplay. This will be zero, uh, 1. And we'll do const int screen index. And this will be main menu. This one will be 0. So now we have our screen indices. And if we just include them, so we can say include uh, screen indices in main menu screen.cpp as well as in gameplay screen.cpp we want to include it there too now we have access to all the screen indices so let's make sure we set our index so we should say m screen index and in the gameplay screen it's going to be screen index gameplay and then in the main menu screen we're going to set it to screen index main menu uh, what's the problem here it's a let's peak definition here Oh right, so because M screen index is defined in our iGame screen and not defined in our gameplay screen, we can't set it in the initializer list. Uh, instead, we just have to set it with equal sign. So we'll say M screen index equals screen index gameplay here. Oops. There we go. 
And now we're also going to set this in the main menu screen. So instead of screen index gameplay, it's going to be screen index main menu. And now what we can do here is the next screen index for the main menu is gameplay. So this is going to naturally make it so that whenever we uh, end the main menu screen, we're going into the gameplay screen. And then in the gameplay screen, if we want to go forward, we can't, there's no screen, but if we want to go backward, if we want to go to the previous screen, we can go to the main menu screen. So we'll say screen index main menu there for getting the previous one. All right, so now that we have that working, uh, let's go ahead and make it so that our main menu actually has some interesting user interface. And let's also make it so that we open up the main menu first. So we have our init UI function uh, that we were using for the gameplay screen. Let's go ahead and just copy it and kind of use the same sort of thing we were doing there. I'll put it here. And let's see, we will set all that stuff up exactly the same. We'll have a test button. Uh, and let's not get a test combo box. We don't need to worry about that. Now to set it, our, our app up so that we are going into the main menu screen first, we need to go into app.cpp. First we're going to go ahead and add it. So we're going to say m screen list uh, and we're going to say add screen. And let's make sure that we, uh, let's, oops, let's make sure that we order them um, in the correct order. Since the gameplay screen is index 1, it should get added after we add our main menu screen. So m main menu screen dot get. And we don't have this main menu screen yet. We need to create it. So I'm going to go to where m gameplay screen is defined and do the same thing for main menu screen. So we're going to use the unique pointer for main menu screen. And we're going to include that up here. Okay, and then we'll go back to app.cpp now that we have that, and what's the problem? Did I, did I spell it wrong? Yeah, I didn't actually. Copy-paste for you. Main menu screen. There we go. Now we're getting it, and we just need to create it here. And let's do it in the right order, not that it matters. Dot equals std make unique, and I'm just going to copy all of this because it's exactly the same other than the type, which is main menu screen. Alright, so now we are creating both of our screens and we are adding them uh, in the correct order because this is index 0, this is index 1. And finally we need to set which screen we're starting at, and instead of the gameplay screen, this time we're going to start with the main menu screen. So now that should set us all up. Uh, we do need to actually do some rendering and things in the uh, main menu screen because right now we aren't drawing anything. So if we go to draw, we can, let's see, we don't need any of this. We do want to clear color and all that. We want to make sure we are clearing it every time. Uh, we'll put that there. What else do we need? Let's see, we don't care about debug rendering. We don't care about lights. Uh, the blend function should already be, already be set correctly. Uh, alpha f alpha blending should already be set correctly, so I think we can just call the GUI.draw and we should be good to go. GUI.draw. Now for check input, we can pretty much copy since we're doing basically the exact same thing. It's just a couple lines of code. There we go. And in on exit clicked, we can also do the exact same thing. We're going to just quit the game. Now, uh, we don't need M game on SDL event because the game isn't active on the main menu screen. All we have is the GUI to worry about, so we can delete that line of code. And what's the problem here? This is gameplay screen. It should be main menu screen, and that should fix that. There we go. Now, let's see. On entry needs to call init UI, and really, that's all we're doing in here. This is a very simple screen right now. Build and destroy on exit. Don't need to do anything. Uh, let's see. Update. We probably do care about... Uh, the camera, uh, since we might want to move the camera around for the actual um, the main menu, uh, you never know. So we'll we'll initialize the camera in the main menu screen in the on entry, and we'll also update the camera. So we'll call m camera update. There we go. And let's just take a quick glance and make sure we're not missing anything. And we are. We need to make sure that we are checking the input uh, as well. And anything else we're initializing that we care about? No, 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 no. That's all we need. Cool. So yeah, check the input 
and we should be good. So let's put check input below camera.update. All right, now let's go ahead and run it and see if we get that button. We should see the main menu screen, which is just going to be basically a blank screen. Maybe we can give it a, a colorful background so it's not uh, so boring. There we go, so here's our main menu. It's just got exit game, and we can click on it and exit the game. Let's give our main menu a different colored background. Let's make it um, like a dark dark blue. I don't know, I'm not very artsy. We'll just make it a dark blue, sure. Point two there. Now let's actually give ourselves some, some more interesting uh, controls to use. So we have exit game. Let's also have start game. So let's make another... Uh, here we go. Let's make another push button, and we'll add another event to it. All right, and here we go. This is going to be... Let's rename this to Exit Button. Exit Button Set Text. Exit Button Set Text. Exit Button... Nope, that's not Exit Button. That's copy-paste. This one should be... We'll make this one the Play Game Button. And let's put this just above, since that's kind of the order I plan on having it shown in the UI. So here's where we're setting the actual actual position of it. If you remember, the way this works is we have the destination rectangle in terms of percentages of the screen. So right now, uh, this 0 .5, 0 .5, it's saying I believe the corner needs to be in the center of the screen, which is why our button is a little bit offset. And then our width is 0.1 and our height is 0.05. So let's change this to 0.45 and that should actually center it correctly since 1, 0.1 divided by 2 is 0.05. There we go, 0.45. And now we just want to make sure that our exit button is below our new game button. And since the new game button takes up 10% of the screen, if we move down the, um, the exit game button by, say, like 15% of the screen, it should look pretty good. Or maybe I moved it up. I probably got my axes flipped. Let's just see what this looks like. Uh-oh. No need to be alarmed. I just named these buttons the exact same thing, and you can't do that. So this one's going to be called uh, New Game Button, and this one's going to be called Exit Button. There we go. Edit. No. Exit Button. And with that, we should actually have... Oops. Stop it. We should have two buttons on the screen that are not conflicting with each other. There we go. We have exit game and exit game uh, because I copy pasted. So let's make sure this one actually says new game. And let's make them a little bit closer together. There we go. And run that. And there we go. We have new game and exit game. And a little dark blue background. Very, very ugly UI, but it's functional. At least it will be here in a second. So let's exit it. And let's go ahead and make it so that we can create a new game. Now, whenever we create a new game, we just want to change the current state uh, to go to the next screen. We can actually cause it to do that. And whenever we do that, what's going to happen is it's going to call on exit in this screen. So we can do any cleanup we want here. Like we can, uh, we can call mgui.destroy. Uh, we can destroy our UI. And we can, if there's anything else we needed to destroy, we could do that here. And then what it's going to do is it's going to switch to our gameplay screen and do all the stuff in here. It's going to call on entry. Gameplay screen doesn't give a crap about main menu screen. It doesn't care what's going on. That's why we have this separation. It's really nice. Uh, so let's go ahead and set up that event handler for clicking the new game button. So we're going to go here. We're going to say bool on new game clicked. It's going to have the exact same arguments parameter here. And we're just going to drop this into the CPP file right above on exit clicked. So let's put it right there. And these are going to look really similar. We're going to return true. We're not going to care about the arguments. All we're going to do is say m current state equals bingen colon colon screen state colon colon change next. There we go. And that should drop us right into the game as soon as we click that uh, after we hook it up here. So let's see, we are setting up the exit button. So let's also set up the new game button. Set up meant to be called. When we click, I could have copy pasted it. So here we say play game button. Oh, I called it play game, but I have new game for text, whatever. We're going to say subscribe event. And remember, we want the clicked event. And for the subscriber, we're going to use, instead of on exit clicked, we are going to use the on 
what did I call it? On new game clicked. There we go. So now we have subscribed our new game event as well as our exit game event. If I hit play here, we should have a working main menu that allows us to jump into the game as soon as I click new game. And there we go. Now we are in the game and we still have our floaty exit game button here and our our little combo box that does absolutely nothing. Um, but you've at least in this tutorial you've learned how to actually do input handling. Or sorry, not input handling, uh, event handling. Um, and you should be able to use your knowledge uh, of this to really create some interesting UIs. There's lots of events. You can look at all the different uh, events for the different controls. Um, you can even go on the CEG UI documentation uh, and there's a huge list of events for all of the different buttons. I can, I can link that in the description as well if you want to take a look at that. And you can hook up all sorts of stuff. You can use this to make map editors or uh, make it so that you can input the player's name or create an inventory and all sorts of things. Um, this is really all of the basic tools you need um, right now to create uh, the UI that you probably need for your game. So I'm not sure exactly what we're going to do in the next tutorial yet, but we are really close to the end of this series. Um, if there's anything you guys want me to clarify for the next t tutorials or if there's anything you want me to go over in this series, um, be sure to let me know in the comments. Thanks, guys.